Hello and welcome to Locusts and Wild Honey. Faith, before we go any further. I want to talk to you today about faith. It's not a, an easy subject but one that we all grapple with, I'm sure, one that we come face to face with in our life generally, as well as in a particular Christian and spiritual life. But I think first of all we need to make a distinction between belief and faith. I think we can actually do that, because sometimes the two are confused or perhaps overlap. Um, we sometimes use those terms, belief and faith, interchangeably. But I think we can make a bit of a distinction. Because I think, first of all, that belief actually is a thought or a number of thoughts that we take to be true. When you think about that, what I mean is that perhaps we might have a belief that uh, we are shy. If I believe that I am shy, I take that to be the truth. And then I tend to live my life according to that belief. Or on the other hand, I could believe, have a belief that I'm confident and outgoing. And I believe that that's the truth about me and I live, I live my life according to that belief. But beliefs are not necessarily the truth. Beliefs are not necessarily true. They can actually be limiting beliefs such as I'm a shy person, or empowering beliefs, which uh, one of which could be I'm a confident person, limiting on the one hand or empowering on the other. Actually, neither of those beliefs might be true and need not be true because you, if someone who's shy can develop the confidence to be an outgoing and confident person. Similarly, someone who's confident can have a setback in life and that could result in them being withdrawn and seen as shy. Faith is a bit of a different concept to belief, I think. One that's a bit more nebulous, if you like. We can't really uh, pin it down. In the Bible, we do come across a definition which tries to pin it down. In the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, we read that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So there's something out there, some destination, if you like, some goal that we want to reach or achieve, and we have a conviction that we are actually going to achieve it, although we don't actually see it right now. So that is, in a sense, something that's rather more definite. When we hear Jesus talk about faith, we do get a sense of what that definition, if you like, in the letter to the Hebrews is all about. On a couple of occasions, Jesus uh, contrasts faith with fear. He says, when we're thinking about our life, uh, our clothes, our money, uh, our food, all the things that we need that are necessary for living. He says, don't be anxious about them. Uh, when he says, don't be anxious, he says, oh, ye of little faith, or you of little faith. So anxiety is the fear that we might experience when we're wondering where we're going to get our food, our clothes, uh, all the necess necessities for living. And we get, can get anxious about that. But Jesus says, where's your faith? God is an abundant God who will provide. When he's with his disciples in the boat, on that storm-tossed boat uh, on the Sea of Galilee, and uh, he's asleep in the boat, and the disciples uh, are full of fear in the storm, Jesus says to them, uh, why are you afraid, O oh, you of little faith? So again, he contrasts fear uh, with faith. So at least we have something there to put it against, to get a feeling, to get a, a sense of what it is. The late Father Antony de Mello, a Jesuit priest, a spiritual director and retreat leader, says that faith is 
our being wide open to whatever might happen to us. It's being wide open to new opinions and ideas and beliefs that are different to our own. And actually being able to be open enough to be changed by those things. It's not really something that you can actually pin down because he says that when we do that, when we do stay open to new ideas, new beliefs and opinions through faith, then the truth is revealed, which is a contrast between belief, which I said were uh, beliefs or thoughts which we hold to be true. Actually, we only discover the truth through faith, through being open, having the openness of faith. Coming into the more secular world, uh, those who write about what success is in this day and age, out in the world of work and uh, in business and that sort of thing, uh, they have a lot to say about faith. Having the faith actually to address whatever it is that we are uh, up against in life. Uh, Napoleon Hill in 1937 published a book, uh, in this book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. And it was his result of 25 years of research into uh, what makes success. He looked at something like 500 successful people in America and beyond and tried to distill the essence of success. And part of that essence, if you like, is faith. And Napoleon Hill uh, says a lot about faith. He has a whole chapter about faith in this book and chapters about faith in other books that he wrote. And one of the definitions, one of the many definitions of faith that he has in this book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, is this. Faith is the eternal elixir which gives life, power and action to the impulse of thought. Life uh, sorry, faith is the eternal elixir which gives life, power and action to the impulse of thought. You see, he's having difficulty in describing just what faith is in itself. Uh, so he calls it an eternal elixir. But it's the thing that gives life to our thoughts. In other words, it's how we step out and act on the thoughts that we have. Many of which are beliefs that we hold about ourselves, the world and others. Steve Chandler, to bring us right up to date, Steve Chandler who is an American coach, business coach and executive coach and leadership coach, talks about faith in his book Reinventing Yourself. And in that book he says that when you come to take action on anything, you don't actually need faith. Faith comes as you're taking the action. Uh, faith is part of the afterglow of actually taking action on something, uh, whether you succeed or not. It's in taking the action that you develop the faith. So uh, you see that we've made a bit of a progression there from belief to a, a definition of what we uh, could say faith is, that definition that we find in the Bible, through uh, to something less solid, which is, uh, as I said, Napoleon Hill calls an eternal elixir, uh, that sort of indefinable, indefinable something that helps us to take action. Uh, and in the more extreme, actually it's some things faith develops within us as we take action. Uh, in this life, take action in our spiritual life. We develop faith in our spiritual life as we take action on the words of Jesus. We can really only develop the faith that Jesus is talking about, I think, uh, the faith that stands in the face of fear, if, we're, if we take his words to heart and actually act on his words, whether we believe them to be true or not, faith is having the, uh, is, faith is stepping out, is acting upon the things that he 
us as <coughs> the things that he tells us to do. I think that that's when we actually find out what faith really means. So whenever perhaps we hear some gospel words of Jesus in future, when we ask ourselves what it takes actually to act on those words of Jesus, perhaps we might find that we have to act on them and then discover what faith actually means. And through acting on those words of Jesus over and over and over again, develop that faith that Jesus puts over and against fear. I hope you've followed what I've been able to say, been trying to say today, and I hope you enjoy what I've had to say today. Please uh, don't forget to share this video if you're watching on Facebook, and do give me any comments that you'd like to make on what I've said, what perhaps faith and belief mean to you. Please don't hesitate to make those comments, and perhaps we might get some sort of discussion going on the subject. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.